Ashri and ECC. I am also thankful to many of my Rotary colleagues who have joined today and some of my family and friends. So I welcome you all for this evening. First of all, let me tell you that what I am going to share with you is some of my experiences that I have incurred in the last six months since this pandemic started. But I feel that all of you with width and depth of experience that are, we are, you are having, all of us have very important to role to play in community, in guiding the next generation and people who are in business. One thing that is there as a leader, what to do in uncertain times, One minute. Huh? What to do in uncertain time? There is no prescription. Like we know a lot of things about leadership, but uncertain times, what we are seeing today are for the first time. And if you expect that at the end of the session, I am going to give you some leads what type of leadership it is, it is not going to be that way. But I am going to create some thought process which will help you, your companies and employees to follow a structured approach to fight current uncertain times. Now coming to the situation, what we have seen in the later part, I am going to focus on the current examples, but I am taking two examples which we are familiar in our life. One was about 30 years back in 1991, when Prime Minister Narsimha Rao, he took over the position as Prime Minister and country was going through very difficult times. And he took certain decisions which were totally different in the sense is one of the decisions was to get world renowned economist as finance minister in Dr. Manmohan Singh. He was leading government which was in minority Lot of people were opposing his ideas, but no one really opposed him in the parliament and he was able to run his government during that uncertain times. So one lesson that comes from Narsimha Rao's experience is that courage and conviction is very important when you are leading in uncertain times. Other thing that is there is this is not a time to get into popularity contest. As a leader, you are unlikely to become popular in the current situation. So assume that whatever decisions you are taking are going to hurt somebody and you are not in the game of popularity contest when you are leading in uncertain times. Other example that all of us are aware is of Saurav Ganguly, 20 years back when he took captaincy of Indian team, Indian cricket was going through bad time with scandal on corruption and match fixing. He had his own style of leadership and one of the drivers that he put forward during those uncertain times is that I must have right talent to be part of Indian team. So he made sure that he selected right people. He also had a combination of experience and youth. And third, he said that one shoe doesn't fit all that means one style is not suitable for all and which is true in context of COVID very much because you cannot deal same way with same people in your organization because everybody has different level of problems, different level of concerns. And therefore, what Savrab Ganguly said for Indian cricket is that you need youth and experience. You need to have different thinking for different people and you have to identify the right talent in the context in which Indian cricket was at that time. This is very much true in the current situation as well. Yeah. I am just going to take you through something that happened in February and March before we went into this uh, lockdown period. In the month of February, I was in Barcelona. I reached there on 1st of February and I spent almost six weeks there. And in the entire month of February, 
we used to have discussions on covid some news here and there on covid but there was really no serious concern that world will stop in march and there will be complete closure of borders for many months to come until on 11th february covid 19 was officially announced by who and there was some more information about covid but there was no serious concern that world will come to stand still this was the time i was in barcelona on 7th march and i had gone with my family for lunch and i saw a lot of tourists there at that time and very few wearing masks and we were even planning on 7th march that where we should have outing next weekend on 14th march because we were thinking things to be so normal even on 7th march then suddenly in the following weeks <clears throat> one minute one minute huh? yeah sorry then certain things happened on 11th march when prime minister modi announced certain restrictions on travel to india and also president trump announced certain travel restrictions between usa and various countries and on 25th march country went into lockdown and that was really end of the old world but things happened so suddenly in the month of march which none of us had predicted even two great leaders of the world mr trump and modi were together on 24th march 24th february in a gathering which was attended by more than 1 lakh people in the stadium and at that time there was no concept of having physical distancing or <clears throat> masks in place so that was on 24th february when there was no concern of things to come one thing that covid has done is covid has affected entire world no other thing in our lifetime had affected everything in the world but covid has affected all countries and no one is safe from covid's consequences and therefore what i am going to do in the next stage i am going to share some of my experiences i am going to share with you what each company need to do and i am also going to talk on individual leadership styles now let's look at the word crisis as it is written in chinese language in chinese language word crisis has two portions one is called danger and one is called opportunity and chinese strongly believe that whenever there is a crisis there is danger but there is also opportunity and therefore in this crisis situation we have seen lot of opportunities that have emerged and of course there are plenty of challenges which all of us have to worry about so i am taking i wrote my block on 18th april and this was my first block which i wrote in my series leadership in uncertain times and in this block i talked about general practitioners i spoke to my general practitioner with whom i am dealing for last 35 years and i had never i never talked to him normally in phone because i always believe that the patient at his clinic should get priority and not me trying to contact him on phone and i told him that your pattern may change because even if you want to see patients your society will not allow you to have patients because societies were that time very particular that people should not come with covid connections they are concerned now also but he still felt that i need to see patients before i prescribe i talked to some of my doctor friends when i was writing this block i spoke to dr tushar shah dr shamlal khanna 
Dr. Manoj Patel, who are my Rotary friends, to see how the patterns will change. And then I wrote my blog that probably stage will come when people will consult doctors on telephone, get prescription on telephone, and visits to doctors will be restricted. And this was something which was not looked possible six months back. But today, if we see the entire medical fraternity had changed its way of dealing with patients. There was time when we were going to doctor just to show the report. But now we say that okay, there is no need to go to doctor just to show the report. Earlier, we used to go to doctor along with our spouse or other companion. Now doctor is concerned that you should come only with those people who are really required and that is patient. Now, as a result, what has happened in the past few months, medical field, which was very traditional in nature, we were going to our doctors, taking prescription, going to medicine. If you look back, you will realize that the, everything you were buying earlier, whether it is a refrigerator or mobile phone pattern has changed. But medical, for some reason, was going through old pattern and we continued it that way. But because of this pandemic and the consequent problems and the concerns, medical fraternity had changed the way of dealing with their patients substantially in the last six months. And this is one major advantage that has happened, which will go a long way. I am now coming to some small examples and then I will come to some big examples. Here is a good friend of mine, Ganesh Bhai Patel, who is having shop in my area for the past 35 years. And you will have in every neighborhood Ganesh Bhai. So Ganesh Bhai is really representative of your neighborhood. Ganesh Bhai had very educated son. His grandson is a very good investment banker. But he always felt that he need to be in his shop for 14 hours. And when his grandson was there during lockdown period, he wanted to know why his grandfather wants to spend 12 hours and 14 hours in the shop. And of course, because of restrictions, he was not spending so much time. Then he told him that I want to see my customers. Okay. I want to ensure that the inventory is right. Okay. I want to make sure that the payment that comes is credited properly. And his grandson convinced him, Grandpa, for all these things, you don't need to be in the shop. You can monitor everything sitting at home because I can put CCTV for you. He was very reluctant to get into technology. But believe me, by the month of August, Ganesh Bhai ensured that his shop has CCTV. Most of his customers were making digital payment. He was monitoring inventory online and therefore he was quite happy to go to his shop only for four hours. And when Ganesh Bhai talked to me about his experience and what he has learned from his grandson, I thought that this is a good opportunity for him to become mentor to other shopkeepers in the area who were struggling. And that time I realized that Ganesh Bhai is also a partner in many shops. He says that in our Kachi community, after some time, people want to start their own business. So he says, I allow people to go and start their own business, but I also keep my partnership in their business. So that way he had business in Borevili, Kandivili, Varsova, and quite well established and well respected in his community. One of his cousins had moved near this college and was running very successful business of Xerox stationery and machinery, uh, stationery and Xerox. And this person was having good shop in Andheri, but he thought that it is better to come near college. And two cousin brothers started two shops, both selling stationery and Xerox. And suddenly they realized that their business is not even 10%, even when they started shop because college has closed. And that was one lesson for Ganesh Bhai and community that you cannot rely on your business only on one customer because anything can go wrong and your business can become zero. And many 
such instances you will find in every suburb of bangalore chennai hyderabad mumbai where people did their business either just on the basis of hospital just on the basis of uh, educational institute like this one and they have collapsed i realized that ganesh bhai is one of the nephews decided to stop his stationery business and he plans to move by diwali time into paint business and i asked him what is the logic why you want to move he says that first i consider myself lucky that i was in stationery business and not in perishable food because he says that even after lockdown of 3 weeks i did not lose any money because i was able to sell whatever inventory i was having maybe at reduced price but i did not lose any money and i said then what is the reason for moving from stationery to paints he says that two of us can never survive even after pandemic is over because business will be less and therefore he said but then i said why only paints and he says that in paints i have selected company called asian paints only with this logic that they are willing to make th deliveries three times a day that means even if i get some order today in the morning they will make delivery in the evening whatever advance i have to give they will give me stock against that and they have payment terms where i can enjoy cash discount after 7 days so his logic was i want to get into business which is risk free which has no shelf life where i don't have to keep inventory and if i have to close at short notice i can close it and therefore his logic was to move into paint line but this is where what 78 year old ganesh bhai as a mentor in his business community he was able to guide several people and i was fortunate that i came in contact with him at that time now i want to take examples from larger companies that we are familiar with and you know in the month of july i went to state bank of india because filing my annual returns i wanted to have entry of my ppf that i had paid and interest there on and somehow i was not having that thing uh, online so i went to state bank of india and i just made that entry and i was quite surprised with the reception i got there because there were only 8 10 people and only two were senior citizens so i was received quite well and i happened to talk to manager he says that in today's context if you have come to our bank you have come with very special purpose because without special reason you will not come and that was perfect understanding of my requirement that i was virtually forced to go to the bank then his deputies told me that i have to put barcode on my passbook and then i had to go and print that passbook and i said i have never done it i have never printed passport passbook so he says don't worry he gave me barcode he gave me person someone came with me to atm and he made sure that he helps me in passbook printing and then i again before coming out i met manager i said thanks for the courtesy and i said i must have been the most expensive customer for you because just for two entries you had person had to help me and do it but he says that today 90% of our transactions we are doing online and therefore every customer coming to the bank has to be respected and this is message really for everyone that anyone coming to your shop anyone coming to your office today is coming only because of specific purpose and most likely he is wants to buy from you and therefore people need to really give lot of respect to people coming in and this was driven by managing director and ceo of uh, state bank of india this was part of corporate culture corporate value that everyone has to drive this customer philosophy and this is what state bank is doing and i must appreciate that lot of banking system has survived during pandemic thanks to extremely hard work put in by people and strong systems that banks have tried to build other example came he was my customer when i was working in shot phoenix and now it's called suprajit 
Phoenix is a company in automobile halogen lamps and they supply to all large auto companies. And they had Japanese collaboration and company was extremely cost conscious, quality conscious and customer driven. They use, they get 100% raw material from Germany and they almost export 50% of what they manufacture. Now, suddenly during this pandemic period, after he started after one or two months break, he was, he got permission in the second installment. Uh, company, which I was working earlier, that company was a bit reluctant that whether we should take risk of supplying to this company because he is having a lot of problems, area is not safe. And somewhere I came into the discussion and I said, and this person was very clear that I don't want to use my past reputation for getting future supplies. That was extremely good statement to make that I want to make my future supplies based on future assurances, not on my past goodwill that I'm enjoying. So what he did, he made a virtual conference with all his stakeholders, with all his suppliers, clearly giving them information that now he has started the factory. This is a stock position. This is his planning for the next three months. This is his planning for the capex requirement, what he's going to spend. And this really gave confidence to German counterpart that this company is definitely having futuristic role to play. And what CEO in this company had done, he had kept open book style of communication with his stakeholders. And this is another quality that is required that your communication has to be very transparent. Third example I want to take again, which is very familiar to all of you, is this girl, Amul. All of you are familiar what Amul has done. And I was following Amul's story even during the pandemic period. Uh, Mr. Sodhi is CEO and managing director of Amul. Normally keeps a low profile, but I have met him uh, in 2011 when Amul's turnover was 10,000 crore. And under his leadership in 2020, they expect to cross 50,000 crore. And in my opinion, he's one of the most highly successful FMCG leaders in the country. I wanted to write something about Amul in my blog. And I sent him WhatsApp message that I want to take some ideas from you because I'm writing this blog and he follows me on LinkedIn. So I, I was quite surprised that he called me in a couple of days and said, Mohan means what can I do? I said, I just want to have something that you have done during pandemic period and how Amul is doing. And so he gave me a very interesting story. He said that when the lockdown was announced, I just walked around in my area. Amul has excellent campus in Anand uh, between Baroda and Ahmedabad. He says, I just walked around and went to Amul's few shops, which are in our campus. So they are normally good, well stocked. And he says that I was surprised to see that only curd and certain other products were available. Uh, Lassi and this thing, but milk was not available. And when he told his wife that milk is not available, his wife cautioned him that if milk is not available, you are going to have a problem. And next day he put it, uh, got all the information. He met his top management. Oh. We have lost this. I can, I can hear. You, you can hear me? No, someone has tried to. Uday Chande has shared the screen. Uday Chande, we wanted to share. No, can we can we disconnect that? Otherwise, yeah, I will miss the, the link. The host can do it. Host can do it. Host can do it. Yes. Yeah. I am back. Yeah. <laughs> so what Mr. Sudhi told me because I basically wanted to have a couple of ideas from him and I have always respected him as extremely successful CEO. 
he told him that when he discussed with the stock management next day that milk is going to be in short supply there were two opinions one group of managers told him that okay if milk is in short supply we need not worry too much because ice cream production is going to reduce and therefore consumption by ice cream manufacturers will be less and we will manage our milk supply chain but mr sothi took other view he says that we cannot stop procurement of milk because of certain issues that can come with ice cream and one very bold decision he took he said that we will buy extra milk from farmers and even if required we will pay extra price to them but we will increase our procurement of milk and believe me what he told me and which is documented with letter i also checked on google in the next coming months amul made sure that they gave 800 crores extra in the hands of extra in the hands of farmers by procurement of extra milk and extra price given to farmers and they ensured that milk supply remains safe so three four things that sodhi told me on that call one was giving extra money to farmers and making sure that extra milk is procured and he says i also had a vested interest in doing this and that reason was india is the only country in the world where milk is produced and milk consumption is increasing elsewhere in the world in milk producing countries consumption is stagnant and they are always trying to find ways to push their milk products in india and that time he told me that in all political discussions giving milk products to india is priority but only if we maintain our supply chain we can avoid others coming in and therefore and the third thing he said that that time ramayan and mahabharat was coming on television and they found that this is a great link to link with the generations this generation previous generation and the previous generation and they gave advertisements in mahabharat and ramayan when this was telecast and they ensured that the consumption of amul products during pandemic increased significantly it was not only milk it was butter it was cheese everything that is consumed and they did not stop at that they also introduced new products like ice cream and ginger dooth etc now these three examples which i have narrated state bank giving customer service phoenix how they have been open with their communication mr sodhi's example of amul how he did not uh, just thought of escaping the problem he came on hands on with his problem and made sure that milk is available for everyone now the next part of my story is not so interesting but this is the real concern this is a story from cholotaka bridge in honduras honduras is a small country in south america and they had bridge which was built in 1934 50 60 years back and about 25 years back they decided to rebuild bridges that are there in their country and this particular bridge was redesigned and honduras is a country which gets lot of hurricane lot of rain so they had taken all the precaution that the bridge will survive all these conditions and bridge was built by japanese and built extremely well you can see from this design that this was built extremely well and despite severe hurricane hurricane and rains this bridge survives so congratulations to the excellent work by japanese technicians honduras people were extremely happy that the bridge survived but what happened in the interim period when there was hurricane and rain the river shifted its position river moved in different direction and there was no need for people to cross from this bridge to that end because there was nothing so this bridge virtually became bridge nowhere so although technically it was very nicely built when this problem came this bridge became of no use and this is what is happening in india today 
and in rest of the world if you look at hospitality industry if you look at travel and tourism industry they have done nothing wrong they have built excellent systems they have given you excellent service but the circumstances are such that they cannot do business and therefore this example from honduras becomes very relevant that you may be doing everything correct but situation will change in such a way that it is of no use and this has happened with many professionals especially in late 40s and 50s that they have lost job lost salary cuts and one example that i want to share with you i am not giving you name of the company but this company is highly profitable 1000 crore plus company and owners of this company were thinking of reducing workers but they said that reducing workers will not do much so let's look at the top management and then they hired a consultant asking him to take review of 20 top management staff in the company and with only one description what have they done in last 6 months message was very clear whatever they have done in the past we have rewarded them we have given them good salary we have given them good money and we want to see what have they contributed in last 6 months and how they will contribute in future and the company focus through that recruiting consultancy firm really came into result that out of 20 managers four had done excellent work so they were again rewarded but 16 had not done any contribution during this pandemic period and their salaries are cut by 30% to 60% recruitment consultant has been given reverse recruitment job if they can admit himself they can give him jobs somewhere but this is you know what has happened in india and in many countries that good professionals have done nothing wrong they have done nothing wrong they have slogged for last so many years but circumstances have changed in such a way that their future is uncertain and one related experience i want to share with this you know people of our generation uh, which started taking loans 30 or 40 years back have taken only housing loan so we our parents probably built house when they retired but we went a step further we took housing loan and took our apartment today generation especially in the last 10 years have housing loan car loan education loan and some other emis also and this has really affected lot of professionals that the lifestyle that they have changed in last 10 years has really created big problems for them because of this sudden pandemic now what i will do i will quickly move to the four important things that we do in every company i will just show you the slides before i move on to the leadership skills that are required now these four slides are for any company whether you are 10 person company whether you are into construction whether you are into manufacturing whether you are into supply chain everyone can benefit from this first is you have to look at your leadership style i will be speaking more on this in couple of minutes so how do you lead your people what sort of communication you have and i have seen companies doing workshop in this four points along with their key staff to continuously evolve way forward and this is very good tool for every company then second is how can we help people work from home effectively now you know if you look at month of december or january and if somebody says that i want to work from home boss will have 50% thinking that maybe he is having some personal work to do and he is giving me uh, work from home excuse this was just 6 months back before pandemic but today work from home has become a norm and therefore how we can help people in terms of technology and other things to work from home the next is how can we help our teams to be productive because lot of new tools are coming and how can we engage because doing meetings online is completely different than doing it offline so these four tools i am not going into details but now i am coming into specific leadership related issues which all of you must focus in the end there will be slide which will give you summary of these points in most of my presentation people write down or take screenshot of that 
because this is something which you can easily implement in every company. First and foremost, you are leader. You are leader in your company. You are leader in your house. You are leader in NGO that you are running. You are leader everywhere. In this group, everyone is a leader. And first of all, you must bring control on the situation that you are in. And you have to keep in mind that only you can influence the situation with others. And you have to accept the reality. You see, I have come across some managers who still feel that this pandemic will go and things will change. But I said, we don't know when the vaccine will come. We don't know when COVID will end. And I am sure of one thing that the world that will be there post COVID is going to be new world. It is not going to be world of the past. How is that new world? We don't know as yet, but it is not going to be same way as it is in the past. And therefore, as a business owner, you have to accept that you are in a situation where you need to change and bring control on your business. Second is perspective. In the sense that today people will reward you if you give expertise. Now, I have some expert from construction industry in this line, some civil contractors in this line. Now, they are really expert in their own business. And unless they bring in that expertise into their business, it is not going to help them because it is going to, they can't be in commodity business. Other important thing is now the next points are again very interesting and very common. This is CK Prahlad. He was a management guru and he used to have one theory and this theory was used by high performance managers in Hindustan Lever and then it followed in other companies. And his formula was, he used to analyze people, A is significantly less or equal to R or A is significantly, significantly higher than R. And he used to have debate, what is this A and what is this R? And I'm going to show you in the next slide what he was meaning. He was saying, A, ambition is less than resources and ambition is much greater than resources. And he was defined managers working in the company and owner-driven companies, entrepreneurs. His philosophy was that in, owner, in professional managers, they will always say that if you want me to get market share of X, you give me 10 crores as advertising budget. If you say no, instead of 10, I will give you only nine. They will say that, okay, then the market share will be this much because they link their performance always with the resources that they get. Whereas any businessman will have his ambition, which is significantly greater than resources. And in today's world, this situation is coming that our resources are diluting. Even as a parent, if you look your resources in terms of the options that you can have for your children are limited. I'm not talking just money option. It are other options. Also, your resources are less. And how do you function when your resources are less? And this is extremely important area to look at. The next one is, I call it zeroth impression, zeroth impression. All of us are familiar with the first impression. Uh, can you see this slide? Yeah. You see, in today's world, zeroth impression, because people will see you even before they meet you. They will do your Google search. I was talking to a leading dermatologist from Hyderabad, and she said that she wants to hire somebody to do her digital presence. I said, no, digital presence, you have to do yourself. Outside agency can only help you to increase your reach, but it is your ideas that matter. And therefore this zeroth presence, how are you seen in social network through Google search is very important. The next is people will reward you only if they see value. People will be ruthless in future. They want to see the value that you can bring. And this is, you know, many times we are with our old, I did this 10 years back, I did this 20 years back, and we still say, 
I am going to, I am of the view that most of your views have run through its expiry period. Most of the view, you have lost the expiry date. So the moment you say that I did this five years back, you really analyze and see whether it is still valid or it has expired. Eight out of 10 cases, you will find that your views have already seen the expiry date and therefore get your views, which are other important aspect is trust. You say as a leader or as a doctor, as a parent, everywhere as a manager, you need to have trust. And today we are operating in the era of trust deficit. Newspaper, first page, pe some news is there. By the time you go to second page, you feel that this is different than what is written on first page. You listen to news on television. You don't know whether it is right news or wrong news. And therefore, as a leader, people are judging you that are you saying things which are true? And therefore, in, you are operating in the trust deficit area era. And therefore, you must build trust continuously. These are the things which I have highlighted, which I mentioned that you must control the situation, focus, create zero impression, which is through social media. Make sure that, that your views are correct. And of course, the old qualities like empathy, transparency, and humility are evergreen. They are like gold. Before I conclude, just to summarize what I have done, I have done certain examples from the experience that I have seen in last six months as a mentor. I have taken you through some company examples, four factors that every company must do in today's context. I have taken some different leadership skills that are required, which are not in the uh, leadership books, but you need to develop. And before I conclude, I want to take example, which is slightly different. This example is of a scientist. In this group, we have a lot of engineers, a lot of doctors, so it is easy for us to connect with his. This lady was scientist, and she was studying physics when she was in school, so her basic education started with physics. She was extremely good in languages, so she became expert in Russian language. She was very good in mathematics, so all awards in her school related to language, related to mathematics were won by her. Although she was studying physics, she later did her doctorate in quantum chemistry. And she built a solid reputation because of her technical background that she can understand technology well and she can explain technology well to other people because of her background and which you will agree, all scientists have this type of approach, but she was extremely number driven lady and she was very successful scientist. She was born in East Germany to German parents. Her mother was Polish. Somewhere when she was in her early thirties, this Berlin wall thing happened and East Germany and West Germany merged. And she felt that she should change her line and from academic research, she jumped into politics. And because of her background, today, the background of the chemist that I gave was of Angela Merkel. Scientist, quantum chemistry doctorate, strong in physics, strong in mathematics, strong in numbers, strong in explanation. In today's context, she has become extremely successful. She is chancellor of Germany for the past 15 years, probably the most respected leader in Europe. And her biggest ability during this Corona period is that whatever she stated, people believed because people have this pre notion that she knows when she's talking about technology. And this is one good example, how your past background also is so important. So as I started, Leadership in uncertain times, there is a no prescription. You have to make your own prescription. I have shared some examples with you. Probably this will help you. And I strongly believe that everyone in this group, everyone who is attending today's program has potential to help other leaders 
you have great potential to contribute as a mentor to the next generation and people who are in difficult times in pandemic and all of us together only can help people to survive and come out of current situation so thank you very much for your attention and this is what i wanted to share on this topic thank you very much thank you mohan for such a superb presentation we've been getting feedback as you have been going along as uh, so many uh, comments excellent examples excellent presentation very useful insightful all the great leaders think the great out leaders, of box leaders of box yesterday's yes. excellence is yes. a yes. common place today uh two examples i have a lot of uh, comments which have been uh, very very encouraging now uh, may i request uh, menlun to uh, start off the discussion you know is menlun around yes sir i'm here yeah. i'm here uh okay thank you uh, mr mohan joshi for your dynamic and very informative presentations we could see that it was an example driven presentation on the topic of leadership in uncertain times your examples drawn from your recent experience during the last 6 months have given us a lot of food for thought you have given lessons learned from neighborhood grocery shops to large indian companies to illustrate how banks fmcg and smes have reacted positively to the current crisis you have clearly shown reactions for all companies and what every leader should do in uncertain times you have stated correctly very much needed approach for leadership in uncertain times should be based on your accepting the situation giving your expertise importance of value creation your zero impression and above all creating trust in the era of trust deficit your concluding example of german chancellor angela merkel really opened up a new dimensions of leadership you have rightly stated that all of us can play an important role as mentors there is no prescription for leadership in uncertain times and all of us can help leaders to grow and excel in current challenging times as professor raza has said we now open session for views conversations and questions there are many leaders here today so uh, you most welcome to come in whoever wants to start off may unmute himself or herself and uh, let, let's have a good interactive discussion we still have some time left so yes i am dr m j joseph welcome reverend joseph I just want to ask a simple question. During the pandemic period, decisions are taken at the political level. Your initiative is very often suspected and looked down. Then how do you act as a mentor or leader in the local or in the uh, other situations when the political realm is Uh, raising its very its uh, very its fist on many of the leaders at the local level. Oh, excellent question. But to be very frank, politics is something I am quite distant away from it. So where politics in, is involved, probably I am not the right person to get <laughs> into that area because I will not understand the political dynamics of it. so i am really coming at business related leadership issues and it will happen as i mentioned in the last slide trust deficit as a mentor it is most important that there is trust if there is no trust and today everybody is operating 
any anybody talking to anybody people feel whether it is right or wrong what he is saying and therefore i will stay away from politics but i will right. go on building my trust level with that person and that trust level again i am calling it on zeroth impression what you do in social media through linkedin and is what people see it at the first stage and normally in this this these discussions we try not to tread uh, that dangerous territory of politics can i say something yeah hello yeah mohan yes uh, uh, what i have seen from your presentation that yeah. you have given number of examples of saurav ganguly or mr sodi or even the uh, chairman of the state bank of india or even narsimha yeah. rao what i find a common thread is all these people are thinking out of the box and when you do that definitely there is going to be success please let yeah. me know your feedback what do you think about this no you have hit uh, very correctly and i will link with what i stated earlier and what uh, what you are mentioning leaders today are not in popularity context so they will not be popular and you have to take certain tough decisions and if you look at narsimha rao's example or of mr sodhi of amul they were low profile people they are low profile people narsimha rao was low profile people he always stayed away from limelight he was never into limelight and therefore current leaders are most likely to have out of box thinking and maintaining low profile so i agree with this part of your observation very well okay thank you and excellent yeah. presentation very useful hopefully i will uh, use it in my future journey of professional life <laughs> oh that I, even if few people can use it then the effort is worth it and that i, the, I always I, feel that I, i am the one yeah and i am sure from this group there will be multiplier effect because some points you will pick up and spread it yeah right yes it's open anyone else anand yeah anand gupta yes, yes. mohan see uh, in last six month if you observe that people have been busy in buying all this grocery product and the, all the you know the low cost products now the problem is the, the particularly like person like me who is in a housing industry has to sell a high price value area how do we create a demand for that how do we uh, manage that of the people shift from that this low price value to the, even to buy this high price value things okay. tough question tough <laughs> question although it affects very small small percentage of population so you what is your question is again referring to very small percentage of population and for which really i don't have answer from where this type of money comes because today also i read in times of india people buying properties of 60 crores and 40 crores and 120 crores and i think at, when, when you are dealing at that level anand the most important factor that is going to come again is trust between you and the customer means don't expect large value transaction that you are aiming at that anybody will come to you without trust and your trust will get reflected in what is happening in google uh, what is your uh, about your company and therefore for doing high value transaction you have to focus on how you will build and sustain that trust level thank you thank yeah, you mohan yes mohan. arvind yeah i would i thought you will uh, you will tell anand that he should give a discount of 25% so all his problems <laughs> you know trust i am not, I, i am not his customer even if he gives 50% discount instead <laughs> 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 of <laughs> yeah <laughs> others see that others? is the problem to... yeah just think discount doesn't solve anything yeah, yeah. yes um, i have a question Uh, professor raja yeah please come in further yeah um mohan uh, mr mohan joshi you have uh, uh, presented us a very stunning and splendid presentation through your experiences 
and uh, mm. we have shown that you are a great mentor and i am still mm. caught up with the honduras see that uh, you know the, the the bridge was intact yeah. but the context has changed the course yeah. of the river has been changed and i yeah. think this is what actually happening so we have uh, built up many things but unfortunately the things were moving uh, differently so yeah. what actually those japanese or the honduras uh, people or the technologies uh, done with the the river so uh, still it it be kept there or uh, they have no. moved it to no. over or this no. uh, to answer your question that was example how the planning was done by them and how strong the bridge was built and i have in our group milan sambare also he is expert in this line he is a th fourth generation expert in mumbai and i must say that whatever planning you do in your system you cannot built in uncertainty of this nature uh, what is current uncertainty nobody could have built in in his planning process and even with what japanese people did they built a bridge which will withstand hurricane and rain what was told to them that hurricane and rain is the major concern so they built specifications according to that there was nothing which was there in specification that bridge it, uh, river itself will change the direction so, so i think uh, so that is my uh, question so the context is totally changing so then uh, how we will be able to um, um interact or you know to solve the problems created by this course change that is my question no no here lot of onus comes on the individual you see individual has to find his way out and then the company will come and i always give example in the education field there are people who are very good teachers when it comes on the job taking session they are extremely good when they have to take session in a classroom of 60 students or 80 students management students but doing session online is completely different and no amount of teaching can tell you unless you put in effort yourself and change your skill set so to say that i am a good teacher in the classroom setting does not make me a good teacher in virtual setting i have to start all over again and prepare my skill set so to answer your question it nobody else can help except you and yourself thank you yeah any other questions any please feel free to come in or share your experiences yes hello <laughs> yeah uh, it has been a very interesting experience based questions uh, and uh, answers also by mohan joshi so i have benefited a lot because i am in research in uh, okay. currently yeah. and these examples will help me in improving my own content with examples okay good thank you thank you good brother uh, i am absolutely happy that we have today uh, the number of participants is uh, is a record for our saturday discussions ever since we started this in april uh, the last the highest was when dr marshalker came we had 85 participants today it touched 91 so i am so happy that we have so many persons so actively listening and uh, seriously interested in this topic uh, any questions any other questions i would also add that uh, this is a very auspicious day for starting our uh, ecc program on leadership because it's the birthday of mahatma gandhi and um, so nothing could have been more auspicious than this gandhi ji and of course lal bahadur shastri is also so we have uh, started off i think on the right foot and on a right day with an excellent uh, presentation from mohan yes yes we have a little more time if there are any questions you are most welcome um okay 
Then may I request to come out to formally propose a vote of thanks? Sukumar? Yes, sir. Yeah, go ahead. Thank you very much, Mr. Mohan G. Joshi, for presenting an excellent presentation on the theme, Leadership in Uncertain Times. Your methods were outstanding and exemplified and magnificent. Your presentation was like a world tour. The slides that you showed us with the local and global examples has broadened our minds. I salute the ocean of knowledge that you shared with us, the creative thoughts and brilliant insights that you shared with us are exemplary. I sincerely appreciate that your presentation was interdisciplinary, multidisciplinary, also transdisciplinary. On behalf of Atasri and Ecumenical Christian Center, I sincerely thank Mr. Mohanji Joshi for your time and your creative and extraordinary presentation. Special word of thanks to Professor KCR Raja and the Director of the Ecumenical Christian Center, Professor Dr. Father Matthew Chandran Kunel, who, was, who studied quantum physics in Harvard University. Also our Deputy Director Tan Mengdun Weipei for organizing this amazing online webinar. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you. And so the meeting comes to an end. Only the host can end the meeting. Menlun, you're the host. Thank you, KCR and everyone. <laughs> thank you, Mohan. Thank you thank very you. much. Thank you. Yeah, thank you all for this, joining us this, this evening. This talk, has been, this talk has been recorded with Mohan's permission. So uh, we can make it available to you. Mohan? Yeah, thank you. <laughs>